would can be right. expected what they felt like. I'd like to uh, call to order the Town yeah, of Woodstock nice. yeah, Board yeah. of Village Trustees meeting of January 14th, 2020. And uh, we're at uh, 7.01. Um, are there any citizens' comments before we start the agenda? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll move along. Uh, we have one uh, addition to the agenda, which has to do with the Vermont Flurry, which is the first thing up. Request for permits, use of the Village Green, the Vermont Flurry Artistry Community Arts Center. Is there anyone here to speak to that? Yes. Please, uh, please uh, announce who you are. Maria and, uh, Cross. Maria Cross. Yes, thank you. <coughs> this event's been going on for, I believe, seven years. When the weather's allowed. When the weather allows. Yeah, last year. Last year didn't work out. Yeah. So, um, it's pretty much all the same. We are hoping, playing with the idea of trying to set up a, an ice bar or a snow-built bar. Oh, yeah, that's great that the Woodstock Inn potentially would manage and run for that, like a set period of time on that Saturday, the 15th of February. Um, <coughs> would be an area blocked out within correct. the green? Yeah, it would have to be a fenced in area mm -hmm. for them to do that. And I'm still talking to them, so I'm not sure that it would even happen with them, but I wanted to put it in there to see if it was something we could, that would be allowed to do. So. Um. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, d I don't think that anyone on this particular board <laughs> would be against that idea. We've, yeah. we've been for that uh, given the protection um, and the time periods involved in the past. So um, that wouldn't be a problem. If you can, if you can get them in to do it, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. I have a question on here about, uh, I don't, uh, Maria, I don't see anything about trash. So. I read, okay, I didn't know what to put on there, but I spoke to Michael Peduto, um, he's sustainable Woodstock, <coughs> just to get his um, <coughs> suggestions of what to do, or, you know, his, because he's done that for other events and whatnot, so he gave me all his contact information for Casella, so I was going to get in touch with Casella and have them bring containers for recycling and trash, and if we can um, get some compostable soup bowls and coffee cups, then we might do a compost bin as well. He said it's kind of tricky <coughs> because you have to make sure Casella's, you know, they, they work with the compost company that they use. So we're, we're working on seeing if we can do that. Otherwise, we'll get recyclable bowls. That's, that that's great because in the winter, uh, we, don't, we actually don't have trash receptacles, I don't believe, on the green at this time. Uh, <coughs> so they would. There are a few. There's events. one I know of, but there's one at just at the HN. But yeah, I think for an event, we want some. We didn't near anticipate your food. a lot of trash, but we figured yeah. if we're serving soup and coffee and hot chocolate, yeah, for that we have some. Yeah. Great. Abel is actually really great too um, for the one-off event. I've used him a lot, okay. and he, um, <coughs> if you describe to him sort of what you're looking for for compost, I've used like the they look like the short recycling bins, mm -hmm. like the rectangular ones, and he provides lids so you can just lid them and tie, tie them off the bags and lid them. Yeah. Um, and that's a system that works pretty well. So if you describe something like that <coughs> to him. He'll, He'll drop off, you know, some totes, one right. for recycling and one for trash, and then one of those lower bins for, for compost, and it works really well, and I'd be happy to help you set it up, too. Okay, thanks. I'll reach out to him. We got an account with Casella that we use, and you know, it's a separate Yeah. Event. So, yeah. We can reach out to both of them, too. I move that we accept artistry's permit for the flurry as presented. Second. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. The, uh, they've also requested to go to 11 o'clock. Your rules say 10. So right. Should uh, be yeah. aware that it's oh, that's right. Um, it's on, that's on Saturday. I see yeah. 10 p.m. on the front page. No, I see 11 inside. Um, uh, under logistics. Um, Any music past 10? No. I don't. I don't see a problem with that. Some of the stuff there's just like because it gets cooler at night and it's easier to stop. As long as you're not pointing the, the oh, lights right. towards the residences on right. north and south. Does anyone see a problem? I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right, then uh, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mary. Thank you.
Yeah. Okay, let's move on to uh, Deja Vu. Fossil in the green. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so close. Have you ever done this so early? <clears throat> I don't remember. I, I try. And I try to do that every it. year. They're like, oh, come so early. Okay. It just happened. So we're re requesting Wassel next year is the 11th, 12th, and 13th. We're talking about maybe working with some merchants to make it more of a week-long event. So it's Wassel week, so that maybe there's some shopping encouraged in there. But right now, what I'm asking for is um, what we have done in the past, which is the bonfire, the luminaries, the soup, the wassail, I mean, the macaroni and cheese and the wassail. <coughs> the memory tree, the hot chocolate and coffee um, on the green. And when you say wassail, up to 10 vendors, I mean, 10 different versions of well, wassail drink? No. What we've done in the past, Abercadaver Coffee has sold um, coffee and hot chocolate. So that's a vendor. We've allowed um, Lucy McKenzie to come on and they sold cookies because they help with cookies down with the horses at the East End. Um, and High Horses has on occasion been on the green with um, riding ponies and a basket for a raffle. So it's those kind of things, along with the chamber, wassail, or um, the, you know the alcohol part, and then the f the food service that we do. Okay. Well, thank you. <coughs> I move we approve as presented. Second. Any further discussion on the wassail? On the green. Composting will be required at that point. We need to no. come to a trash can meeting <laughs> because we're talking. So okay. Composting yeah. will be required. Yeah, it's just a state thing, but I know I know that you know people are still figuring out solutions. So, yeah. but I th I'm okay. just making a point to mention it now because Thank after you. July, it's part of the law. I know enforcement's going to be like non-existent. I'm sure, it's just something to keep in mind. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, did I vote? Did Okay. No, we didn't vote. Okay. The motion's been made. Discussions been <coughs> had. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Beth, moving on. Um, the next one is also you on the stream. The art festival. The art festival. This will be our 12th or 13th year of the Woodstock Chamber Art Festival. <coughs> Excuse me. We have um, up to 40 pop up tents. We have not had that many, but we would like to ask for that. Um, we have a lot of return artists. <coughs> um, we have a food booth, some wine or spirit tasting, usually it's silo. Um, and we would like to set up on Friday late afternoon so the artists can get their tents up and then they can move their art in on Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. Is that different from the past? No, nothing has changed. If you said you'd like to have up to 40, which is more than in the past, how many have you had in the past? 35. So close to yeah. that. Okay. Um, it's a I move the approval is presented. Second. Um, any further discussion or questions? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those in favor? <laughs> Hello, Anna. Jeez, it's all right. Carrie? Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Cold. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Opposed? <laughs> the motion carries. Thank you. All right, moving on to uh, Market on the Green. <coughs> and Market on the Green, this has been going on since 2007. Um, we're not making any changes in our request, up to 35 booths. That includes one table for the chamber to do food. Um, EBT and debit cards, etc. Um, and it will go from June 3rd through October 14th, weather permitting. Mm -hmm. Is October 14th? Is that a different? Uh, okay. It's the week. It's the it's the Wednesday after Columbus Day. Wednesday after Columbus Day. It's the last one. 
So no other changes? No, no. changes in the percentages no. of I've got it food in there. and crafts and so forth? Right. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. 60-20-20. Second. Any motions been made and seconded? Any uh, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Maple Madness. <coughs> yes. Last year we canceled it. I'm not right. sure. We would like the opportunity to try to continue with Maple Madness. Um, what we do is give out free samples of sugar on snow, uh, maple butter popcorn, and we generally work with Vins or the Falconry to have a bird there. We um, talk about promoting in the Woodstock areas maple sugar production. And it, it, it goes with Vermont's Maple Sugar Weekend. Right. In conjunction with that. It's a statewide thing. I make a statewide. motion to accept as presented. Second. Um, okay, any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Everything seems to be the way it's been. Oh, except I have a new one. <laughs> yeah. I like this. Woodstock's mm -hmm. Spooky Halloween. Or Halloween on the Green. I don't know <coughs> what the name of it is. We're working with the Inn and would take any other partners who would like to participate. Um, looking for to carve pumpkins to then decorate the green, kind of like the luminaries. So we are working with vendors right now trying to find donation of pumpkins. Um, so then we would have a pet costume parade for Halloween, a children's costume parade on the green, not around the green, but in, inside the green. Games, sack races, those kind of things, just to draw people. It's a Saturday, and Great. it's in its initial time, and then we would be through in time for people to go trick-or-treating on High Street if that's what they're going to do. Or all throughout the or throughout the town, which we would like to do. Yeah, I think that's what we decided on, that we were going to open it up a little bit. Yeah, but that was based on potentially information that was skewed of how upset people are on High Street or not. I think. I mean, people are allowed to go anywhere now. It's just a People now. are, people are they're, they're they're always, always allowed, allowed to go, go everywhere. everywhere. But right. there's just nobody has. High Street just has been there. So maybe it's, it will zone. help encourage that a little bit. Either way, it seems Either like a great event. Yeah. I move we approve as presented. Uh, second. Second <coughs> moved. It's moved and seconded by Anna. <coughs> and, uh, and further discussion, again, I just always ask about, you know, be aware of the cleanup part of it. Right. Right. And what we're, we would do is then um, Billings Farm has offered to take the pumpkins for their critters after we oh, nice. are through with them on Sunday. Thank you for setting that up. Okay. Um, so I don't know. All those Did in favor? Vote? Oh, yeah. aye. <laughs> what? Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay. I said all those in favor. Um, all right. I, I opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, back to Wassel, but this time the parade part. The parade. Nothing is changing. Um, the only thing we need to work a little more closely with is um, the parking down at the east end for that entire day because it becomes a log jam down there with the parking and horses. Um, but nothing else. The parade route would stay the same up. Um, Pleasant Street to Elm Street to Park Street to Central Street. Right. So what are you going to do to mitigate the parking? We worked with, with the chief and with some volunteers from High Horses. They just got there a little late um, so that there were people parked in some of the spaces, but they had volunteers to block off both ends. So only horse trailers, et cetera, could come in. Mm -hmm. Because if it had been a nice weekend, it would have been a banner parade. Even on a bad weekend, it was a pretty good parade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we ran the shuttle. We hired two buses this year. How did that work out? People parked there and used the shuttle all, all day because 
there's no other par but parking. In terms of quantity, a lot of people? Yeah, a lot of people use the shuttle. That's great. I think what we'll do next year is I can have the midnight officer put the barricades up. Uh, yeah. With a sign saying horse parking only, and that should mitigate yeah. any issues or alleviate any issues. <coughs> I hope that we approve this uh, permit as presented. I second. <laughs> it's moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Um, moving on to the taste of Woodstock. Right. Um, again, this is its 12th, 12th year or so. Um, August 8th, which is always the second Saturday in August. Um, I have put in to go a little later. The committee hasn't decided. Last year we went to six. Um, again, we just need some input on that. And we're working to get a, a few more different bands, but everything will be the same. So, so you're going to use the time past six. And it's not just for a cleanup and breakdown. Right. It's also for entertainment until, right. nine, until nine. So it it was stuff. kind of before this past summer. Summer, mm -hmm. you went down to six, and before that, it was late. Nine. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I think that's up to the committee. Sure I can come audience. back and report to you what they decided at some point in a later date. Well, I think we could probably, you know, uh, approve it if everyone agrees um, up until nine. And okay. if you decide to end it earlier, that's your decision. <coughs> Thank you. And will we approve as presented? Second. Now that would need some serious composting. Yes. Yes, it would. Yeah, but that, that was a blanket statement for all of your. No, I get it. Yeah, but, I didn't want to like say this that. This one is. When is yeah. that actually happening? So. Yeah. July. Yeah. It goes into effect July. <coughs> uh, the, okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Hoof around the green. Now last year we had a snowstorm on Maple Madness, and we did not do hoof around the green. The weather that whole week leading up was the pits. Um, this is something we'd like to tie into Maple Madness. I don't know if you remember the year before. It was just I mean your was it your daughter that was in it? Just adorable baby animals walking around the green. Um, is a little parade. Being dragged, more like. Yeah, the poor calf. <laughs> One of the calves just laid down and said, I'm too tired to walk. So, yeah, it's really cute. So why are you separating this from April Madness? It's the same it doesn't, but the one, same one permit is to hold a parade and one is to use the green. Okay. It's the same date. Going around. Okay. March 21st, Maple Weekend. Yeah. Have you got a pooper person? No. That's Wassel. But I did for Wassel. But uh, these are all these animals? We didn't. I think the each individual they cleaned up. Okay, uh, as long as you have some provision. Yeah. They're all a bunch of farmers, so. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it was. It. Yeah, they're not used to, to picking it up, though, necessarily. I feel like they do that a lot. Uh, well, <laughs> have you ever been in a barn? <laughs> well, in a barn. In yeah, a barn. Yeah, time. it's not a. Outside, but okay. yeah, I make a motion to approve as presented. Second. Uh, motions been made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That's quite a list, Beth. <laughs> it's a lot of events for you. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's great. Exactly. It's a, it's a yeah. wonderful use of the green, and, and uh, we love that. Yeah. All right, let's move forward. Uh, the next item on the agenda is our police chief's report. Chief Lish. So speaking of Wassel, we had uh, we didn't have any reported issues during Wassel. I think it went pretty smooth overall, and with that one little parking village, but we'll take care of that. Um, if you could just control the weather next year, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> all you need uh, to do. Put it on my list. Uh, we participated in the Governor's Highway uh, Holiday DUI campaign, which. Uh, Attributed 12 and a half additional patrol hours, netted one DUI and one criminal driving with license suspended arrest, nine tickets. Um, January 17th, upcoming, 
is another highway safety initiative called Border to Border because of the holiday weekend. Uh, this Friday, there'll be extra patrols uh, between New York and New Hampshire on Route 4. So we'll be participating in that, covering the Woodstock portion, obviously, <coughs> of Route 4. Um, what, 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 what's the purpose of that one? It's just a uh, traffic safety <coughs> ticket kind of a deal. Okay. Um, because of the increased traffic during this. It's probably the busiest traveled ski weekend of the year. Thank you. We participated in some um, domestic violence training as part of a pilot program that Woodstock PD and Hartford PD co-sponsored for a grant with uh, WISE um, to s get victims of domestic violence for aggravated domestic violence at least into a forensic experiential uh, trauma interview. So it's sort of a post um, interview after the uh, after the fact, so it's to assist us in gathering more evidence for for victims to help them and to help us. Um, no issues on New Year's Eve, um, and tomorrow the parking committee will meet to try to begin to talk about what we're going to do or where we want to go with the meters. So that'll be here at town hall at 10:30 for anybody interested that, that wants to, to participate or just watch. I will be there. <laughs> well, you're chairing the committee. I hope you're going to be there. <laughs> um, Can you include in that, please, the percentage of the meters that don't work? I'm getting a little bit fed up of getting tickets for meters that don't work. I don't know, Chief. Can you? Well, <laughs> uh, here's the issue. The battery is, it's the again, this is sort of the impetus behind forming this committee. is yep. because we are aware of that yep. frustration. We are aware of that issue. Um, and uh, we call it battery season, of course, but our batteries have... Uh, are not keeping up with the lack of sunlight, but all of us think that the meters being older are they use more battery power, so we go through batteries sooner, um, and that's sort of it's a vicious cycle. But yeah, we're aware of it, which is why I we started this whole thing because we don't want that level of frustration. We want to make it easy for people. The other day, I saw Terry going down Elm cleaning off the piece of because I mean the ice had just frozen up on it. Yeah. It was like yeah, wet and then it snowed yeah. and then they were completely frosted over so. Right. Uh, oh okay the, and speaking of weather and well, storms we I'm sorry. Well on the, we're still on meters. Uh, do you have figures for oh. December? Yes I do. And again this speaks to why we uh, we started this committee and are, are needing to, to address the issue. Um, so in December of 2018, uh, monthly the revenues were $11,935.70. December of this year was $9,239.85. So the difference of $2,695 less this year versus last year, and I attribute a great deal of that to the battery issues and the, and the meter issues that we're having. Uh, which is why, you know, I proposed putting this together and getting the ball rolling on it when I did because it was an issue we've been fighting. I'm yeah. just tired of fighting it. I want to do something. I think that's the first month where we've shown that reversal. Right. Yeah. Month over month, we've always been above. Right. This past month was significantly lower. So, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, last but not least, with the weather coming up this weekend as forecast, I just uh, ask residents to be sure to clear their sidewalks within 24 hours after the storm. I did put out a bunch of warnings last week or the week before after that last storm we had, um, asking people to clear their sidewalks, and they all did. It's been one of the you know, crazy, wacky winter this winter where freeze thaw, freeze thaw. You know, <coughs> So people right. are having, and then it froze, and so they were like, well, I need an ice pick to, to clear my sidewalk. So I did allow some people, if they was, if they put dirt on top of it, especially <coughs> there residents who try to do their own sidewalk, but um, if they put dirt on it, cleared the path, I put dirt on it so that it wasn't slippery. I, I kind of let that slide. But I do ask people, if you keep up with it, you clear it right away. How many, how many of those did you give out? Warnings? Yeah. I bet I gave out 10. 10? Throughout the village. <coughs> it's difficult at times when, um, like you said, the, the weather pattern is such that even after you clean it or clear it and 
then it freezes over and the person who did the clearing is already gone for the day and I understand I try to I don't try to be unreasonable no I know I know you don't I have a question chief uh, on another subject that but this has come up because I've had a couple of complaints and maybe you have had them too uh, uh, there's a uh, uh, more and more there's a common use after snowfalls of very loud leaf blowers to remove snow as opposed to other methods I've noticed some of the contractors have but if it's a real powdery snow right you'll see the use of the leaf blowers I don't know that there's any prohibition against it other than time so if they start it before 7 a.m. in the village there is a prohibition that's, against but it. that's the problem they have to start it before 7 a.m. Okay. And particularly, I wonder if you might contact someone at the library, uh, because uh, my understanding is they had leaf blowers out in front doing their grounds well before seven at that last powdery snowfall, and it disturbed quite a few village residents. Okay. And I just ask, if you get disturbed before seven a.m., call us. <laughs> we don't know. We can't really do much about it after the fact, but if you call us, we'll go out there and tell them. And to cease yeah. until after 7 a.m. Yeah. Uh, but I will contact the library and have them notify their contractor to That'd not be do it before 7 a.m. That'd be great. Thank you. Any other questions for our chief? Thank you, chief. Thank you. Thanks, Robbie. <coughs> All right, let's move on to yes, our, our... I'm <coughs> sorry, I, didn't, I don't need to take Frank's time, but I just wanted to report to you, and I should have done it for citizens' comments, that I received a uh, an email two days ago that Woodstock made the top 25 Hallmark Channel towns for Christmas. Cool. What? Only the top 25? Well, we were in the top 10. Are we in any of their movies? No. No. Well, they pretend that we are. Do they? Have they yes. said Woodstock Sounds in a Hallmark movie? Yeah. shallow. What? We should get some sort of like kickback for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like. We need to trademark the name Royal. and then you can yeah, you know, something. trademark Woodstock Vermont <laughs> and then they have to license it. Yeah. Our logo looks like a trademark symbol. Well, that's, that's, that's great. Thank you for telling us that. <coughs> All right. Well, let's move on to our village manager's report and uh, the financial report. Questions as we go down. I have a big question mark starting at miscellaneous. Uh, miscellaneous. Yeah. Well, just can can you remind us why we would have that figure in there? Which it just uh, maybe there must there must be a list for miscellaneous that I uh, just can't recall. Under budget, the very top. Income. That's income. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the miscellaneous. Yeah, but that's it's a big it's a big number. And I'm just wondering. Is so like a random grant? Why we why we're labeling labeling it miscellaneous as opposed to what it's specifically? Why does that number f <coughs> actually sound so familiar? Like it's it specifically was for. And why was it budgeted for forty six thousand dollars? <coughs> well, because that's what we plan on taking in. Right, but why under miscellaneous? And why would anything be put under miscellaneous? That's a jolly good question. <coughs> You always just tell me when you have a question, you get me to mark two or three things, and this wasn't one of them. Okay. <laughs> At least we're halfway through the year and only halfway through the budget. <laughs> right. right. I mean, let's look at the positive, please. We should have got 58% at this point. Uh, right. No, budget. it's a win-win. Yeah, so no, we leave it alone. Um, <laughs> I will give you a detailed answer to that tomorrow. That, that'd be great. It doesn't even have to be tomorrow, but I was just curious why. Well, maybe what, I can what, actually what, share it. You have a budget meeting in the morning. I know that. Yeah, I will that. give you the answer in the morning. Great. I did not bring the details to you the other night. Okay. The, uh, under, going down, unless someone else has a question, under special articles, uh, grants and contributions from the trust fund of $800. Which fund would that be? <coughs> Where is it? Right here. Well, that's the budget. Uh, um, where would we budget? Is that the $9,500? I, I would have thought it would have been $9,500, but then underneath it, there's 
Yes, yeah. it's trust fund, but it says 800. Why would we have budgeted 800? I'm just curious. Uh, <coughs> again, I. It's okay. We that's, just that's an old question. From we a budget and sheet with <laughs> We're over budget in office administration. At least we didn't spend it. <laughs> Is that for a new hire? <laughs> we haven't had a chance yet. Right? Yeah, it's just a, a question. We can move on. Um, Office administration's at 158% so far. Um, that, that's one that I marked. Thank you. <coughs> on the same page. page. Yeah. Uh, that's where my uh, hourly rate is oh. hitting. Uh, and you'll notice uh, up above executive is, executive is down. It's way under. Yeah. Why is that? Can you okay, are you going to change that? No. No. No? No. no. Oh, um, okay. Gotcha. I see. Okay. You we did that on purpose. It's not an yeah. executive branch. It's purposely done. Got it. That makes sense. So I don't have another question to the very bottom of the that first page um, under highway department. Um, the budget for police communications versus the 5.87% that's been spent. Are we expecting a huge thing to come in still this year? That's a huge <laughs> But why is there such an enormous disparity? I have the feeling it just hasn't been transferred over yet. That's that's an expense that is it just transferred into the town from the village. But I don't think it just has been transferred yet. Without seeing, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what happens every year. Okay. Didn't, yeah, but didn't we talk about that at the budget meeting that that's the pa the pass through? Mm -hmm. um, oh, that was what this I thought you were talking. Sorry. Police communications versus actual. Oh wow! Okay, got it. Thank you. So, no, but I do remember that communications when we were talking about like uh, internet and uh, Comcast and like all of that <coughs> sort of stuff that they were re-categorizing uh, things and potentially that could have been why that's that way. You know, but, yeah, that could be. Wasn't there, also clarification. Wasn't there also that something with yet. the Escutney Tower? Not from an expense. Not that I know of. Okay. That was what Beth was saying. For the <coughs> I think town. we, 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 we were exploring different tower sites. Right. But there wasn't. Not an exactly. expense. We were just exploring it. it. Just discussion. No expense Thank related to that yeah. at this time. Okay. And uh, we've had a bit more maintenance than we expected so far this year. That building. Um, that is where the uh, we've been scrambling to find money to pay the oh the architect engineer for the AMS work. So we're hitting little spots. All over the place. Okay. Well, if there's any maintenance left between now and June, no, there's, like any. there's lots of money in police communications. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Just kidding. <coughs> Smoke signals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have any other questions. How about anyone else on the board? No, I have no further questions. That's it for that, Frank. How about any other things that you might want to report to us? Anything else you'd like to report to oh, us? Um, the only other thing, in the one time we removed snow this year, uh, we used a, a bobcat instead of the uh, loader on the streets. I don't know whether you noticed any particular difference or not. I noticed that's less damage, less scrape marks. Um, it's our intention to, uh, to continue to use that little wheel bobcat. Great. So did a pretty good job. I don't know whether it's really expensive. We paid six hundred dollars, but it's a truck in, truck out, so and it comes with an operator. So. Yeah, and I remember last year we lost a, a parking meter. Yeah. Uh, cost it the former way of doing We're it. We're continue to do that through the winter. So we don't have any gauge of how much it actually costs for the loader to do that fuel-wise, because those things use a ton of fuel, right? We well, use a ton of fuel, and you've got labor. Um, so it's probably and a, almost a wash. And rightfully, you should amortize the cost of the machine. So 
it, make, it mitigates. <coughs> yeah, it's probably, it's probably the smart thing to do. Thank you. We have to be coming back to town as he was doing everything, and he was hmm? very speedy. We were driving through the village as he was doing it. He was very speedy. Is that it, Frank? That's it. That's it. Thank you. Unless you have questions. Anyone have any questions? Okay, moving on to old business. Uh, our Woodstock, our future Woodstock community vision. And uh, if this is at this point. This is the, uh, resolution. the resolution. So I presented the vision last uh, board meeting. And I wish it was here now. But, it's not. Um, I, but I don't know. Do you guys recall? Do you need a little refresher mm -hmm. on the vision? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so the vision was a uh, pretty much a year long or a six month process. It started last spring and um, it was uh, paid for by the EDC. Um, and it was, but it was really a community effort. Um, they spent all the, all throughout the <coughs> spring and summertime gathering feedback from the community about um, what they really loved about Woodstock, what they wanted to see more of in Woodstock, um, what made them feel good about living here, um, all sorts of information. And at the end of it was this document that really um, was a great representation of uh, just exactly what I described and I think it would it serves as a really great document to um, a, a new town manager coming in or uh, the local nonprofits or uh, organizations in town um, to to kind of use as like a lens so any kind of decision making they're doing or um, or initiatives they're trying to support they can kind of uh, look at it against this vision and say is this aligned with the sort of the bigger picture of what mm -hmm. we really want in this community what what the community members have asked for and um, and then potentially you can use that as a decision-making tool and you could potent you could tweak what you your actions <coughs> that you're taking so that it could maybe align more with what you're trying what with our what our community vision is so um, we feel like it's a great document, but it's important that uh, it's utilized. Otherwise, it will just sit on a shelf and not do much for us, which is not what we want. Um, not what We don't want the efforts to just sort of die where they are. So I think it's really important that we utilize the vision and we support it as a board, uh, that the select board supports it, and that we um, put it in front of our new town manager as a, something that he or she references um, Frequently, so that you know he can make sure that he's uh, that they're aligning with what we want. Okay, thank you for that <laughs> yeah. uh, rehash. And um, so you're asking us to uh, formally to, uh, formally adopt this, just changing the word select board to, to village, village trustees, trustees yes. village trustees, mm -hmm. for what we have in front of us, the resolution. Um, Uh, I, I was going to Is use there any the other change you need to make in that mm -hmm. for us to uh, approve it? It's November 21st. What did the steering committee um, vote for the trustees as well as the select board on that day? Uh, did the steering <coughs> committee of the... I would start. Your steering committee voted unanimously on November 21st. So this is something that we, we will say as a resolution, basically. So we, the trustees, resolved. Um, so whereas the trustees find that the adoption of the community vision will provide guidance in the preparation of future poli policy and strategic plans. So we choose one, basically. One of these resolutions. <coughs> no, I'm sorry, I don't, yeah, I don't see two resolutions. I'm sorry if you could read the resolution. Read so the people at home. I thought know it was like two resolutions about. they adopted both. So this is a list of potential resolutions that we could adopt, stating that we formally adopt. So these are just, this is just um, uh, suggested uh, wording. All of these are. I yes. think I think it's one thing. That so you're asking, so asking so us to I'm asking you to 
utilize one of these resolutions as a formal adoption of the community vision. So my suggestion is that our resolution be now therefore be it resolved by the trustees of the village of Woodstock, Vermont, approve and adopt the community vision attached herein and commit to using it to evaluate decisions and preparation of future policy tr strategic plans and operational and investment decisions. Or you could do section two. <coughs> oh, why, why not do both? It seems to me like you want to do both. Yeah, see. Or you could do both. Yeah. So yeah, it would just be something that you would list in our uh, in the minutes. Section two and says it would be that the resolution that, that we reads that adopt. The, the, yeah. The section two reads that the would read that the uh, board of village trustees directs departments, village departments, to use the statements in evaluating and recommending policy decisions or operational improvements in the town. I don't see why we wouldn't want to. I'm going to the, the trustees adopt both. both section one and section two. Substituting. Seconded. Yes, substituting. Do you have that? trustees for select board? So yes. it's the now <coughs> and down. Could we have a second on that? A second. Uh, I'll second it. On the motion. Okay. Is there further discussion? I just have a question. Is the vision document available online or something? Weird. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. I think it's available. Um, there's a. Uh, our Woodstock, our vision our is future. the our Woodstock, our Okay, cool. We've already is reviewed that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I was just saying for reference. Yeah, yeah. it yes, is. And there's a Facebook page too. Cool. Um, so it's easily accessible. Yeah. Any further discussion on uh, approving this resolution? Um, if not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries uh, to approve that resolution. Thank you for your work on that, Anna. Yeah, so it was a community effort. It's great. Um, moving along, uh, next we have uh, uh, under old business, the Ethelwood Sidewalk Fund, um, which we have <coughs> discussed at our last meeting and <coughs> now uh, in front of us. Um, and we discussed the uh, authorizing the use of the appreciation and income of $17,897.41 for rehabilitation of our uh, sidewalks in, the, in 2020. And we have no idea how much a project like this is going to cost. A lot more than 17000 Right. <laughs> and this is why I was at... So one of the things that I looked up what civic betterment means, it means the promotion of the common good and general welfare of the people of the state or any political subdivision they're in. If it's a, why don't we just take, you're, you had it started at 26, just take 30 of it. At least we're, we're actually getting money towards a bigger project that needs to get done. I don't wanna be square, I mean, I'm not saying that we should this second approve that number, but at least make it up to something like that, that if we need that money, once that real plan has been put together, we can take that money. Not be like, oh, now where are we gonna get that extra 15? Well, we're You're giving yourself the opportunity and never taking it even to the principle that it started with. And just, just for <coughs> sake, I'm pretty sure, isn't it called, I mean, for sidewalks? Are we just looking at the Ethel Woods? Oh, that's the Ethel Woods we're one. I apologize. I was thinking of the Orly Whitcomb one. No. I apologize. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're talking about we're looking at Yeah, it. because I want the money for what it needs, what it should go to. So yeah. exactly what would we use the 17000 for? Oh, the whole thing. Um, it would go towards the sidewalk and curb renovation that we anticipate needing to accomplish before the state... Uh, road repair that's going to occur in 2021. So it is a good question. Do we have any idea how much this work is going to cost? So the work that we've done so far is to walk the asphalt sidewalks of the village and discover that we have five miles of them. And an, a price estimate for repairing those asphalt ones is 600000 uh, That doesn't tackle curbs and it doesn't tackle the concrete side, sidewalks throughout the village. So it's upwards of 600,000 and curbs is probably an expensive job and we've asked the, ask, what have we done on that for so far, Frank? On the curbs? The curbs. Um, 
it depends on whether they're asphalt or, or uh, well, it depends on whether they're asphalt, concrete, or granite. Um, granite is very expensive. And, and where, where did that $600,000 number come from? Was there a bid process or? We've had an estimate by one person. We don't have a formal bid yet because we're trying to work out how we can afford to do that work. The work that has some urgency to it is the curbing work, um, particularly the curbs on Elm Street. Because if we have the, the road resurfaced in 2021, we really want to get the curbs done at the same time or before because we don't want to do curb work afterwards because that will destroy the road that's just been laid. Um, so we have been working to try and get estimates and haven't been able to get any so far. But we want to be prepared to have money ready for that. <coughs> Um, what percentage of that road area would be uh, involved with that, uh, with the yes, repaving? the whole village. All of um, the village roads of Route 4 and 106 and Route 12, all the village roads that cross are going to be resurfaced. This is our ten year right. this is our ten year research. Who is requesting this disbursement of the seventeen K? We are. We are. The trustees? Yes. No, no. Well we well, are actually, um, in terms of the funds. Actually, yeah. actually the actually, public, you, you actually came the, and public asked. the trustee of public funds, funds is able to do this and is asking you and went came to an earlier meeting <coughs> and asked you for your agreement to yes. it. So all you're giving is an agreement. Right. Chris Lloyd came okay. uh, along with Jill previously. Uh, and um, so we're looking for, we're just looking for all the pockets of money that can be accessed. Mm -hmm. And I think it's terrific. It'll go as far as it goes. We're not going to come up with $600,000, but we can certainly make improvements, uh, which are so incredibly necessary. That was my question. Are there, is there any, uh, I would imagine there's state funding, some grants towards something, some work like this? Very little money for curbs. Uh, sidewalks, though? No. Sidewalks. Um, if you have a certain designation, doesn't that come into play? There have been limited sidewalk projects over the last 10 years approved in some towns. Okay. It's a very laborious process in time. Uh, we don't have that kind of time. It takes a long time. You get, in the loop, you get in the rotation, and I don't think we're in the rotation at this point. Maybe we should put some. Uh -huh. Get in a rotation to complete, I mean, at least complete could, what we yeah. can't come up with um, in this coming so year. Just also quickly googling, it looks like in September of last year there was an implementation of a um, of bicycle and pedestrian grants, uh, which included uh, one of the approved projects with sidewalks in Moortown um, and sidewalks in Swanton. So, wh whatever that grant fund is, it seems like that would be something that would be worth looking into because they. This past year, that just three months ago, they approved two grants for sidewalks. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Looking into it, the pro as Frank said, the problem is the, the time frame, how so long it takes. So your discussion to this evening is on behalf of Chris Lloyd. He's just asking for your support in using some of the Ethelwood uh, fund to, to release it to go to sidewalk work. Could I have a motion on this? It could be further discussion. Okay. Mm -hmm. We did it. I was going to say so moved we approve the trustee of the public funds to take funds from this fund to fund <laughs> the sidewalk <laughs> project. Uh, up to Do you want to mention the amount? The $17,897.41. Thank you. All right. Any other further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? None. So we support Chris Lloyd taking that amount for this, that purpose. <coughs> okay, moving along. Uh, 2020 Certificate of Highway Mileage. This basically, Mr. Chairman, is your annual certification of Class 1, 2, 3, and 4 uh, highways in the, in the town or in the village. Um, it's been represented to me that you have no change, so you should simply. We'll simply mark it. Uh, there are no changes, and you sign the, the wall. <coughs> okay, so we don't need a motion. We just need signatures. Is that correct, or do we? I think you need to approve the uh, certificate of highway mileage. Okay. So moved. 
Second. Okay. Um, Nikki has the document for you to sign. Okay, so we'll do that when we do the warrants. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, of approval. Okay, next up, discussion uh, <coughs> concerning use of income from the Rockefeller Endowment Fund. So, I, I think because the way you and I discussed before we got here, that we're going to look at the um, quarterly report first. Well, we right. can, yeah, thank you, Patrick. We're going to do that first. So, Patrick Proctor is uh, one of the five members of the uh, investment committee that uh, has been managing this fund, and Patrick has prepared a quarterly report. Okay, so um, for the trustees. this is pretty, there's a projection over here. This is pretty much in line with the quarterly reports we've been giving um, over the past year or two um, in that the funds that we're invested in are uh, bond funds and equity funds that were, at, were split at 40, 60 um, percentages. And the funds that we um, use are designed to mimic the market pretty closely. So uh, the, the graphs here, um, demonstrate our two funds against kind of typical indexes just to show how we do. Um, so the first thing is that we got a report back um, from the VCLF, which Jill, remember what that stands for? Community Fund. Right, so $100,000 of the fund was decided to uh, give to the Vermont Community Loan Fund because you know they, they pay interest back and it, and it benefits the community. And so that's increased in value by $5,294. Um, then the rest of the fund, um, the equities portion we're comparing against the S&P 500, which is a pretty good index of, of equities performance in the market. And two of the past four months, we've outperformed the market. Um, and then you can see that, you know, in three of those four months, it's very, very close. Um, with the bond fund, it's even more similar. Um, we only outperformed one of the past four months, but in all cases, we were within the index fund by less than half of a percent. So ba basically, we're mimicking exactly what it's doing. Um, and so the total value um, as of September, or sorry, I did, that's a typo, but it's as of December 30th, apologies, um, is an increase of 2.4% since September 30th. Um, and that includes an $89,000 withdrawal for the 2020, or sorry, $69,000 withdrawal for the 2020 town tax rolls. Mm -hmm. So that accounts for the fact that, so, so that's, that 2.4% gain is, um, is including that withdrawal. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, if, I think that if we had um, not taken that withdrawal, we would have seen that gain be closer to like the 5% neighborhood for the quarter. So, um, so that, that's the quarterly report, which uh, How much because. Was that drop? What's that? What was that drop? 69,500. Um, I think <coughs> it's. 69,500 uh, comes to you, then you and, and 60 goes, goes, to, to goes to the town. Goes to the town, yeah. And um, so I get it, it, because you guys are the fiduciaries uh, along with the select board, every quarter, give or take a month, um, we just need you to ap approve this as a board to show that we are responsibly managing the fund and that you see that it's not being um, mishandled in any way. Um, and that was a measure that was taken when we switched the fund from being uh, managed by a private company to being managed uh, in these kind of lower fee funds um, to, s to save on fees that the town was paying. But it means that there's now slightly more oversight. And so you guys need to approve it every quarter. Um, so I submit it for approval. <laughs> OK. Thank you for your work on that, Patrick, and, and uh, Thank you to move. visual clarity involved. Um, a motion to approve? I move to approve. Second. Um, okay, any discussion or questions? If not, all those in favor? I, I oh, think, I question. Think if we approve it, we should make the two amendments, the date change and the fact that 69,500 was withdrawn. Okay. So that, because somebody might look at this in three years' time and have forgotten those two okay, things. Okay, well, I can edit it. Okay, okay well, we can have that in a minute. So move for those you. amendments. <coughs> And magically, it appears. I give you that. <coughs> Why was that the number? Sixty-nine thousand five hundred. Um. So it used to be forty-one thousand, and it hadn't been put up for years. So we asked to get an estimate of what the taxes would be if they were still paying taxes, and that was the estimate. 
So now we believe that we have a, a good estimate. We do <coughs> A good estimate for the number in lieu of real taxes rather than something many years ago and should our taxes increase in the next 10 years then perhaps we should look at whether this can increase the amount it contributes each year. The, the idea is that the fund was to offset the Rockefeller's tax payments for the farm and so it, it had not been raised it for many many years and so when Jill made the motion to start managing the fund privately at that same time the motion was also made to increase the amount Did so the that isn't the fund also to offset other stuff going on in the no. village in town no. No. Specific, the letter from Rockefeller is specific it's about offsetting the taxes and um, we've for a certain number of years and then passed a certain number of years, 20 years I believe, um, he said we could actually do with it whatever we wanted to, that's, but, he, that's not actually but he, he, he hoped. <laughs> what he said was that he hoped it would continue in perpetuity, and then that he changed it, but I don't know what perpetuity <coughs> means. Forever. It's forever. Oh, thank you. I, but I, I'm going to give a whole presentation on this in like two minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just for, for taxes is why he originally donated the money. Right, and then he, he gave the authority to the two boards after 20 years to do with as they wished, if they wished to do so. As in, like, did he even expect it to the fund to get to where it is? Yes. It's, he, it's and considering appreciation to the, to the taxes. No, it's, it's, can't he, read he, he said, I have a quote, and we can look at the letter, and the, the next part of the presentation is all about this. So if we just yeah. want to. <laughs> all right, so we will go move on. I should give you just a little bit of background as to why Patrick's giving this presentation tonight. Um, we had a meeting of the investment committee, which consists of uh, Patrick Proctor, Jill Davies, myself, Ann Quasman, and Mark Hall. And uh, at our meeting, uh, at the beginning of the meeting, uh, the, where the quorum of Ann Quasman and Jill Davies and I were there, we uh, decided after discussion that we should recommend that Two hundred. I'm sorry, you're misrepresenting. This. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please don't interrupt me, and I will not interrupt you when you're talking. Thank you so much. So, we decided that we were going to recommend to the uh, village trustees that two hundred thousand dollars, which was primarily the gain over a 12-month period, um, uh, be used towards uh, the curbing and sidewalk repairs that we need to do in this village, uh, as a uh, a form of tax relief and then uh, Patrick joined the meeting and he objected to that we were not able to come to an agreement and but we did decide that the viewpoint that Patrick had should be presented to you and uh, he's prepared a preparation. So, so I, 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 I'd like to express that first of all this is a long-standing issue that the committee has debated and that Mark and I both feel strongly that that, that money should not be withdrawn and we have had probably every, almost every meeting in the past two years we've discussed this topic and Jeff and Jill are very aware of our opposition to it and they took this meeting when neither of us could attend because we were both at home taking care of our children to to, to, to take a vote on it which I then left I, I was actually in a business meeting I was at home with my child though and left my wife at home and came down here so that I could object because they decided to have this vote when neither of us was okay, here. Okay, so let's direct <coughs> this we had the meeting, we have had the meeting planned for three months, neither told us that they couldn't come, so we went on and we were discussing. Okay. We did not take a vote at before you came to the meeting. Well, we were discussing. Okay, <laughs> and I'm now putting a third opinion in. I respectfully say that why don't we just do a second take yes. and move forward. Well, I, I agree. Let's, let's move forward. Sounds like there's some disagreement on this yep. topic. So <laughs> let's <laughs> get it sorted well, out. Some disagreement. <laughs> <laughs> So, and, and I believe you actually said it was Bush who requested to hear a presentation about the possibility of withdrawing or not withdrawing money, correct? So, Bush had asked, could, what do you think about it? Yep. Yes. So, um, this is, we were kind of talking about some of these things, but this is a, a, just a quick sum up of what the Rockefeller Fund is. It was established in 1993, and that quote is from the establishing letter, which you can see on the left, which was written to Phil by Mary and Lawrence Rockefeller. And the reason for the fund, they said, was to offset the loss of real property taxes from the donation of the Marsh Billings uh, National Park to the federal government. 
Um, and currently, as we were discussing, the fund provides the town with a yearly payment in the tax rolls to offset those lost taxes for $69,500. Um, for 20 years after it was uh, established, there was a requirement that the Rockefellers, uh, it, the Rockefellers required that the town reinvest it in its own fund, and so it could grow and become more of an endowment. Um, at the end of that time, they said the town would be free to use the entire income and principal of the fund as it sees fit, although it is our hope that the town would wish to retain the fund as a permanent endowment. Um, so I believe, Jill, correct me if I'm wrong, but that 2013 transition was when you were able to move it out of being managed by an external party and move it into a Vanguard fund that had the investment no, committee? it's more re recent than that. Okay. I, I believe we only did that in 2017. So this flexibility is what has allowed us to move it to a fund that has lower fees than we were paying before and have more um, oversight by citizens into what's mm -hmm. happening with the fund um, and, and how it's spent. Um, so this is just a quick sum up of the state of the fund. We just did the quarterly report, so a lot of this is repeating what was in that quarterly report. Um, but uh, at a 5% rate, uh, rate of return for net, net of inflation, um, the fund needs to have a balance of at least 1390000 in order to pay that tax roll payment every year. So in order for us to break even with the tax payment that the town takes every year, we need at least $1.39 million. Um, if that annual payment is increased, as property taxes increase, obviously that minimum value of the fund would have to increase as well. So I just gave an example here. If we change from 69500 to 80000 we would need $1.6 in the fund. So we would need a larger base for the fund. Um, the current balance of the fund is $1,785,000, and um, this is ignoring the $100,000 that the Vermont Community Loan has, because I assume that's something we want to kind of keep in perpetuity, but that's up for discussion. Um, so we have a $395,000 or 22% surplus over that minimum required. So if, it, if we lost that much money, $395,000, we, we would be, the, the fund would be losing money each year on its tax payment to the town. Um, and the fund, uh, per, per discussion, is allocated 60% equities and 40% bonds, and that's largely to protect the fund against volatility in the stock market. So equities um, tend to be more volatile, and we don't want to see the fund going up, up and down. We want to see it, have it be conservatively invested. Um, so like I mentioned, I, I, myself and, and Mark both feel pretty strongly that we shouldn't use the surplus. And so the first thing I wanted to do um, was go over a few of the reasons why. The first reason is that if you take a good year, like this year, and you take the money off the table that you made and you spend it, you're unsettling the idea of an average rate of return. So when we say a 5% <laughs> average rate of return is expected, that includes the good years averaged with the bad years, right? If you take your money from the good years and you spend it, then all you have left are bad years and your average goes way down. And so that means that your average return certainly would be reduced, but it could go to zero or be negative. And so it immediately kind of unsettles that concept of a break-even number on a net rate of return because it's not a valid concept anymore. Um, the second thing is that the surplus pr protects us against market corrections and downturns. Um, obviously, we've been having a really up time in the stock market, and so the fund has been doing really well. And there's no way to anticipate how long that will continue, but it, it's you know, generally pretty common sense that markets that have been doing well for many, many years tend to correct themselves at some point. Um, and then um, it, the, the third item is kind of about how the town uses the money. So. Um, <coughs> It, what we can do is have annual withdrawals that we can increase or decrease based on the health of the fund. And even though it represents a property tax payment, it's not directly linked to the property taxes. So we can do things like, you know, for example, if we want property tax revenue to go up in the town one year, and property taxes aren't increased, then we can't do that because that's state law. But this fund is managed by us. So if we say all of a sudden, you know, it's viable to increase the yearly withdrawal by $10,000 and we want to do that, we can vote internally to the town and do that. Um, and there's no additional redistribution of the funds, that it comes straight to us, it's pure income to the town. Um, and then this third point is the one that, that uh, I, I think is the, the most relevant reason is that uh, these unplanned withdrawals, unlike the yearly annual withdrawals that we get that are planned, 
They're a one-time withdrawal. So what it means is that we get that money once, and then it's gone out of the fund, um, and it hurts the principal of the fund. And so, for example, like it, Jeff's talking about a two hundred thousand dollar withdrawal. Um, you know, our, our budget last year that was approved, I think, was six million dollars. So that two hundred thousand dollars rep represents a three percent difference in our budget. But you can only do it one year. You can't do it every year. You know, and so, and so there's a real question of. Do we want to put the fund's potential surplus or security in jeopardy just to increase the budget by 3% for one year? Um, so I, I, I ran some numbers here for a couple of different scenarios. Uh, the first one is what would happen to our um, maximum annual uh, break-even payout, right? And so um, right now you can see at the top if we make no withdrawal, so in the current state of the fund, our payout to the town every year could be as high as $89,000. We could be withdrawing $20,000 more a year. Um, that number, if you go up to $400,000, which, which hasn't been formally suggested, but you can see it goes to $69,250, and we actually go below the amount that we're currently withdrawing, and so it wouldn't be sustainable. Uh, and so the main idea that I'm just trying to demonstrate here is that um, by withdrawing these large lump sums of money, we, we reduce the amount of choice we have in increasing that yearly withdrawal. So if we get down into the, into the 200,000, 300,000 range, we really can't increase our annual withdrawal in the coming years, which is something we could potentially want to do. Um, the second and more relevant thing, I think, is uh, building up the fund to have stability against a market correction. Um, and so you'll see here some numbers from the stock market correction of 2007 to 2009. And it has a range of dates um, over those two years and the percent change in three equities indexes, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the Dow Jones. And you can see that um, each of them has a many, many double digit corrections there uh, that, that happened over the course of those two years. But then the table also uh, agglomerates those those percent changes to give a total percent change and you can see that the effect of that downward economy and that that negative effect on the S&P 500 was negative 56 percent and um, as I showed in the quarterly report our fund is very closely tied to the S&P 500 we tend to line up with it every quarter and so if the S&P were to see a correction like this the fund would also see a correction that was this large um, so it, so I then created a table of what various market corrections would do to the fund's ability to pay, um, pay us out every year for the tax rolls. So what you can see is here is that on the left, if we had a zero dollar withdrawal, we're basically protected against any market correction south of 50, or, or yeah, south of 50%, right? So it's like, even if we had a 25% market correction, the fund is still good to be paying out $75,000 a year, no problem. And so that I think is something that's really important for the town is the idea that this, this yearly income to the town budget is something that the town counts on uh, to, to receive. And so we wanna protect the fund so that that is something that will definitely happen every year. Um, and so you, you can look at this, um, this graph and you can see kind of the effects uh, that would happen and how, you know, a $100,000 number, you're still pretty well insured against um, most corrections. And then when you get to $200,000, you are kind of split down the middle um, in terms of how, how we'd be getting really close to the yearly amount and having to reduce that yearly amount. Um, and so I, and I think if we just like go back here and look for a minute, you know, um, and we, we just look at the S&P column, which is right in the middle, um, you can see changes of negative 7, negative 11, negative 21, negative 10, negative 10, negative 15. You know, so it's totally reasonable to think that we would be in the right-hand side of this graph um, if we had a major market correction. Um, and so, you know, for, for, for me, that's something to look at and say, you know, do we want to jeopardize the security of the yearly payment from the fund or do we want to leave it be because really even if we withdrew this money it would be a one-time payout that is a small blip on our budget versus something that we're taking in every year you know just to think about it as you know 69 500 over 10 years you're talking about six seven, almost seven hundred thousand dollars that that would be reduced in the town budget and, and it's worth remembering that taking it out as a lump sum versus taking it out in a big in an annual withdrawal all this money is still going to the town budget it's a it, it's all money that's being used for for the town it's just whether you do it in a you know controlled 
well thought out way or whether you take out a lump sum and reduce your principal and your earning potential. Um, so th this is just kind of a sum up of everything that I've discussed. Um, you know, the, the main thing is that the current balance provides a lot of protection against market corrections. Um, the other thing that is really valuable is that this principal and these earnings are not subject to Act 60 redistribution. So they're not like other tax revenue where when taxes go up, it goes up to the state and then can potentially be redistributed. This is a, a small fund of principal that is owned by the town and is held by the town. And so if it goes away, and, or even if it reduces by half in size and we don't have it anymore, that's a loss that we can't ever get back again. You know, that's something that, that it is a unique funding source that we have that was left by Mr. <coughs> um, you know, the, Again, the, the third point is that the annual withdrawals can be increased. So if the town wants to use more of this money and see more revenue, there's a way to do it that is in line with the kind of strategy of the fund that will let the town see 10 or 15 percent more than it's getting now annually um, and the, the the fourth one is that really the security of the fund the fund was created to offset the tax rolls of that property over there if we lose that ability it's not the end of the world but it is something that was intended to kind of create in the same way that a lot of the Rockefeller's contributions created stability for the town it creates stability in the tax revenues over there um, and finally, you know, there are a number of uh, grants and, um, and, and endowments in the town. Um, you know, I, th I think the Faulkner Park is held by an endowment, and there's this Rockefeller endowment. Um, and, and one thing to consider is that the original letter does say that they would like to keep this fund operating in perpetuity. And so I think that management of this fund by the town that is responsible and you know, is conservative so that we keep it operating demonstrates to future donors who might want to give other endowments that were responsibly minded and not kind of just withdrawing money to pay bills in town when we need it. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I hope that, um, that I, I tried to make this pretty just like by the numbers and level headed. I, I don't have a lot of like stake in the game in terms of like my personal opinion about what, where this fund should go. I'm kind of going by what their original letter said, and then just looking at the numbers of the current balance and market corrections. Um, and, I, and I know that it feels, you know, from the perspective of town budget planning and things like that, when you look at a fund that's seeing really good growth in these on years, it's like, oh, why don't we use some of that money? And I think that there are two answers to that. One is that they have been really on years, and there could be really off years that we want to protect against. And the other one is just that, you know, we want this fund to really be self-sustaining and last for a long time for future generations in the town. So that's my piece on that. If you have any questions, I, I also emailed all of you guys this presentation if you want to look at it. More. How long would it take the fund to make that back, do you think? It's not really possible to say that because of market but, predictions, yeah. but if you said like average rate of return, so yeah. you know, 1.39 million makes 70,000 a year. So on average, it would probably take you about three years to earn it back. But you have to keep in mind that we've been coming through a lot of on years, so you wouldn't necessarily have on years going forward. And that's really the, the thing about that, the point I was making about that average rate <coughs> of return, that average rate of return assumes you don't take out money in good years or take out money in bad years. And so if you take out the good years, they get removed from the average. And so that 5% average then isn't really valid. Um, so you know, if, if the market keeps going gangbusters, it could come back very quickly. Um, but if the market tanked, we could be below our, you know, our, our annual withdrawal levels. So I'm not really getting a read on what your formal suggestion is because it seems like there is a little bit of wiggle room in terms of a bigger draw from the fund, but I don't know what exactly the number is that well, you're thinking. My suggestion, so my personal opinion would be to leave it alone only because the state of the market, I'm, I'm a more conservative person and I would be inclined to hold on to it. If anything, maybe sell some of the shares and keep the money in the fund as cash and, and just, just hang on to it, but, but stick with it. I think that if the town does want to use more of the money, which is its prerogative, I think the way to do that is to increase the annual withdrawal. Because what you see then is that if, if we went up to 79,000, 89,000, like if we look at this, um, let's see, the, so, so you can see right now, um, we can, we can increase with the current fund value 
the annual withdrawal up to 89,250 and still be within that 5% average rate of return. And so I'm more, much more inclined to, to recommend something that's a balanced increase your yearly withdrawal by $20,000 every year and then stick with the current strategy because part of what allows the fund to grow is that it has large principal because the principal makes interest. And so if you take a chunk of the principal out, then you, you lose that ability. Can you go back a couple of slides though? Yeah. Because there was one more. This more. one? Nope, more. Uh, one more. One more. That's it. That's it? <laughs> there was one where you said it showed um, if we kept this much in the account, then this oh, yeah. would be yeah. so that one. Yes. Yeah. So, Sorry. It, so at the top, we need 1.4 million to do the current payment. Payment. Right. Which would be a withdrawal of $400,000. But say we upped it to 80, we would need that much. 1.6. Right, which we have 1.75, is that what we have? 1.78. Oh. Okay. <coughs> so, yeah. Yes, so let's move on to some other. Patrick yeah. wants some other input from other folks. Well, too. I'm just answering questions. Jeff. Thank you. No, but I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the, your presentation. It was yeah. very clear and uh, appreciated that yeah. you did that work. Uh, question, Joe. Well, I think we might have found somewhere where we could all agree. Right. Because one of the proposals for improving out. sidewalks was to do the work continually every year. <coughs> so improve our asphalt sidewalks. Our, say our, our best estimate is 600,000. So over the course of 10 years, spend 60,000 every year. Maybe this fund contributes 20,000 specifically to that project every year. That's our 200,000. Above the 60,000. Yes. Yeah, and, and I mean, I think it, it, contributing that larger amount is well within the 5% the that we can, kind of is, is the average rate of return. We, and, and what that enables us to do is, you, you know, if, if we look at this, um, the market correction here, so um, the only thing to consider would be that that $89,000 number is kind of the max number that we could do at 5%. So if you saw a big market correction number to 15 or 20% down, you would have to evaluate whether you wanted to reduce the yearly payment or, but I think I think responding to a market correction with a different investment strategy is something that you would address when that happened. And you could catch it to something project specific rather than uh, using it to pay salaries or something. You it's a piece of work that you could commit to every year. I think it has to be project specific. I agree with that. I, and Jill's, Jill's suggestion, to me there are three really important things. One is to preserve our large principle. Two is to stay in line with the original intent of the bequest. Could you go back to the original intent page? Yep. Please, just for and, and three, you know, I have seen this town and village throw money sort of willy-nilly at things as band-aids again and again, and I'm not willing to throw any of this money towards something without a long-term plan in place. And so a sort of gradual approach that allowed us to do work every year with a solid plan, um, to me, is, is much more um, beneficial to, you know, to the village and the town in general, so. And that is part of the chunk of money. And then maybe there are other avenues that we should be looking into to, to if we need a bigger amount right now. And the other thing that I'll just mention that, that I think is a benefit of this kind of strategy that we're talking about is that because the principal on the account is so high right now, even if we went to 89000 and we were taking that and then we had a, a financial dip, we would be more protected against that dip. And so if there were two or three years where we had to take 89000 at a loss, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be as big a deal because the principal would not be as reduced. Right. Well... You know, that's very clear. It's also not the entire picture, in my opinion. And I look at this, what you have here, um, and Rockefeller's intent, and I, I knew what <coughs> Mr. Rockefeller did when he was still benefacting this town. I personally think he would, he would be not at all objecting to removing a lump sum from the uh, endowment at this point in it, or he wouldn't have even given that proviso in there. Um, and to retain the fund as a permanent endowment, it would, I see you've made that larger than the other print. It's, uh, 
Well, that's, that's nobody. That's, nobody was. Nobody was. To, what I highlighted nobody, was their nobody, power, Jeff. Yes, I know you highlighted it to prove your point. But the thing about it is that actually, <coughs> I mean, nobody was in su in suggesting that we re not retain the fund as a permanent endowment. Okay, so in, if if we did consider taking a larger lump sum. Uh, whatever that sum might be, I mean, if we look at that hundred one one million seven hundred eighty six thousand dollars that is at right now, or at the end of the year, um, versus the one million five hundred eighty six thousand that was twelve months previous to that. Add on to that sixty nine thousand five hundred, because inadvertently uh, the sixty nine thousand five hundred was taken out twice in two thousand and nineteen. <coughs> If it hadn't been taken out till 2020, that 1,786,000 so would have been 69,000 on paper anyway, <coughs> higher. Um, but, but the number that matters. Let me in terms just of finish talking, thank you. So let me just finish. Um, so you're talking about $269,500 difference between the two years at the end of the year, 12 months. And looking at your charts, the risk of taking that much out was really incredibly low. You're talking about almost $300,000. No, talking about $200,000. <laughs> the risk was low. If they were, but even if the market correction was 25%, it would be almost at the same amount of ability to withdraw as we're at right now. Um, and then, of course, the, correct, the market correction would turn around at some point, uh, historically, and start going up again. So. I'm just saying, I'm not saying that's, that's what we have to do. I'm saying that there's good reasons to s tackle the problem that we've got in a way that will have an impact on the infrastructure of this town quickly, as opposed to, because it's been left to go downhill for an awful long time. This would help. There's an awful lot else that's on our plate um, in terms of taxes that uh, especially uh, that the select board is, is tackling. Um, this year and and special articles and things to approve in, in the millions of dollars um, I see this as a project that could be have a, a, a pretty big impact on with a lump sum uh, of that na of that nature without damaging uh, our ability to have a permanent fund with that with a very low risk of in, uh, uh, an ability to not take in the same amount of taxes that we've been taking in. <coughs> Can I ask a question? Yeah. How do you how do you know that the money would be used for that project? Because it, it seems like if we're taking it would be earmarked. For it. But it seems like if we're taking two hundred thousand dollars out of a town endowment, then there should be a process where people can propose projects, and then it would be decided what that two hundred thousand dollars would be used. Well, for. no, I, I don't think that I would be proposing at all that any that any of it be used other than project I'm talking about, sidewalks and curbs, nothing other than that. Well, but that's what I'm saying. Why would other voices in the community not be able to express what they thought the money should be used for? Because Mr. Rockefeller said that the use of the funds would be decided by the two governing boards. I, the select board, would, if, if we decided to use a lump sum, the select board would have to be in agreement. It, so, but, but I'm saying even amongst the board, why couldn't other board members propose other projects? <coughs> They could. They could. They could. Yeah. We have a big problem and a big tax bill this year coming up and a big road project. <coughs> and it's time to fix the sidewalks. It's so time to fix the curbs. Uh, I would say that Mr. Rockefeller spent enough money to have the lines buried to ensure that this place looked the way everybody comes here to see it look. <coughs> I think it'd be pretty, uh, w whether we do this or not, and I have to say, I, this is well done, just for explanation, because I, I don't have the business knowledge of even looking at this way, but I think you'd be pretty appalled to see the way our sidewalks have deteriorated. I, I don't know the guy, I, it doesn't, there's people, I mean, if he wrote it to Phil, my concern is other, I'm listening to like how much the estimates are for fixing the sidewalks. Two hundred thousand dollars is a pittance compared to what we really need. So my biggest concern, other than depleting the principal, is seeing this two hundred thousand dollars spent in a spent in a willy nilly way that will have to be redone again anyway because we're only doing the job 
you know, by by quarters, not even by halves, by quarters. Well, two hundred thousand is a third of six hundred thousand. But that doesn't even count the curbs, Jeff. The six hundred thousand dollars. The other thing that I, I am curious about in general in town is the idea of doing some sort of fundraising for. Because I know that the library did the fundraising for their HVAC and was very successful in raising. Hold that off and um, really fast amount of time. But but the the other thing is that we have discussed on the investment committee um, the idea of potentially doing a lower number withdrawal, but doing it in a matching with a town campaign mm -hmm. so that the intent was to get people in the town involved and feel like they know that they're spending the endowment money, but they're also putting their own money money forward to kind of have a, have a co-funding. Um, right. But but I think in, in general, the, the main thing to me is that, I, I totally agree with you, Carrie, that, that Mr. Rockefeller would have funded f fixing the sidewalks in the same way that he funded many other things in this town. Um, <coughs> and just for myself, as someone being on the investment committee, my concern with that is just that that's not what this fund was created for. And so I'm kind of, as an investment committee member, trying to protect the intent of this fund so that it continues feeding into the tax rolls reliably in the same way that it's been doing for the past 25 years, you know, that that, that continues for another 25 years. Well, if, you know, if it was a one-time project instead of an ongoing thing, it would. And and your, even your numbers show that it basically is, most likely it would. So I just I don't want to keep hearing that, Patrick. But what if something but, like this happens but, again next year? Well, then we And then the year after well, that. Then we couldn't do that unless it was a, Yeah, but and we're, I mean, we're almost cheating ourselves by not having the project aligned to know exactly what we need. And it seems to me having this discussion before there's like a prelim, before there's some sort of concrete proposal in place yeah. for how we do this, how we would really use well this money, know. how we would perhaps well, raise some matching funds from the town. It seems incredibly premature. Right, is the chicken coming before the egg with this, or do we need the chicken to, the, the egg to come first, or whatever that would be? Because without the money, we can't get anything done. <laughs> And I'm certainly not. I am certainly not willing to fix my name to anything that makes a decision about money that is endowed for this town, without some real plans in place. So we just we just did. We just voted the you know to to align with uh, Chris Lloyd for seven thousand dollars or something so that was earmarked I, for side. I know, so but I, I, I was just saying the reason we're making this presentation um, was more informational and largely because. We've been having this debate in the investing committee for the better part of two years, and uh, <coughs> there was a request by Butch for input about whether or not we could withdraw money from it. Um, and some of us felt strongly that we should not, and some of us felt strongly that we should. And over the course of two years, we've probably had eight meetings where we've had that discussion, and there's never been an agreement on it. And so the idea was to put the numbers in front of the select board and the trustees so that you, you could see. And while we can't give you a unanimous recommendation on what to do with the money, because we, we have a standing disagreement, we can give you a perspective on how, how much the money makes and what the <laughs> risks are and, and how the numbers pan out. I think you gave a very nuanced presentation and I think we have some real options in terms of what we can do on an annual basis or some... No matter what, we should table it until at least Well, month. let's... I, I agree with that. I think yeah. I think what we need is to, some more information from uh, the highway department for, um, exactly how much we can do with X amount mm -hmm. of money and how many sidewalks we could repair um, and then and then come back and discuss this further at that point. Um, yeah, I think attempting to take a big bite out of a number that we don't really even know what what that is or is is um, irresponsible. Hey, Jill. Pardon me. When you talk about the cost of six hundred thousand to do the sidewalk repair, what happens to a building that's staircase is built on top of the sidewalk? That would suit would then need to be repaired. <coughs> like my staircase was just rebuilt to Eyes on Elm mm -hmm. two years ago. It lays its stones on the sidewalk that needs to be changed. What happens with that? No idea. So that is just to do the the well, work, not well, would, we were only who's responsible about, for that? We were only talking about the asphalt sidewalks in that six hundred thousand dollar. Right, is that in front of uh, Isaiah yeah, Anderson? No, that's concrete. Oh, okay. so, so that's not even part of the six hundred thousand. We've probably got a million dollars worth work to be done. Yeah. Holy. 
Now, the curbs on Elm Street were... Oh, the so those cracks on the sidewalk are not going to be part of it. Mm -hmm. um, nice. Frank, is there a, a way to get some estimate of how much we could cover? Uh, not for, you know, uh, sure. for next month, perhaps. And there's, there's also another, and I'm not advocating borrowing any more money, but there is also another way to do this. You could use this to leverage time payments yeah. and access are you talking about like a loan from the, or yeah. a bond or something? A loan or a bond. I think we yeah. investigated that and it wasn't feasible, right? Because of the way it's, it's structured? Because we did talk about that on, mm -hmm. on the committee. <coughs> That's what I was wondering, if that increase in payout could serve as some sort of loan or bond. So, so I, 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 I know we've had the discussion. Yeah, I, I, what, I, what I recall yeah. happened was that, um, and, and this could be a little off in where it is, but, but Jill definitely contacted the Vermont bond um, advisor okay. yeah and and it was something to do with the way this is structured that bonds are um are targeted at municipalities or not municipalities but well, it not couldn't be it couldn't be a direct uh yeah it would, the, the bond or the loan would be a, a general obligation of the town right uh, and so, so i think there was an idea that um, the, the that it, the, uh, the town can't offset. take on a general obligation with collateral that's in a private account or something because something the, like yeah, the, the, the way collateral. the way this is held is not it's not actually held by the town in name so, so the the um the town votes on representatives who currently are jeff and jill who are the signatories on the account and then the fiduciary approvals come from the boards but the financial entity... Would we need to use this as collateral? No. So if we just use an increased annual payout to... For paying. For to paying, pay to back pay for a loan. So, so we, we, start, we, we were unanimously mm -hmm. in favor on the committee, and you guys speak up if you remember this differently, but in favor of the idea of taking a bond and using the fund with an annual payout to back mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And what we did research came up as it was no-go, but it's certainly saying we're willing to revisit because, it, I mean, that's certainly the most bang for your buck is that if you can take a million dollar loan for sidewalks and your yearly payment on that is 30K and you pay it out of this, that, that's win-win. That's that makes the most wow. sense. We did talk well, about that. Yep. That you, you makes sense. It's about it a million and 65,000. Um, the, the challenge, we've, and you're seeing it over in the city of Rutland, there's gonna be a bond issue for $5 million to do streets and about two-thirds of the way through the bond payment Blue. segment, we're going to be redoing streets again. Yeah. So right. the, you, you have to structure the, the borrowing within the uh, about 80% of the life right. of the project. Well, yeah. and, and, and I think and certainly the numbers are need to be you know, fine-tuned, yeah. but I think the idea of using this fund as a tool to either fully fund a bond or to do a matching where it does a 50-50 match with mm -hmm. the town on a bond, but something so that, because what you really want to get is get bang for your buck. And, and part of the issue is that taking out $100, $200,000 is a very small blip on our budget. Right. But if we could use that as something that would get us a much bigger number, I think that that's something, I, I, I think I could say without reservation that the committee was definitely behind if we can figure out how to do it, mm -hmm. for sure. But we, we did all like that idea. Yeah. Sounds like a yeah, I think we Solid all like plan. that. Except don't get excited about a million dollars for thirty thousand a year. It's more like yeah, a million sorry. dollars for sixty-five thousand. Well, I was about to say it's <laughs> got to be more than yeah. that. But that's well, much more of a well, fight that but, we but, 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 but so the question would be, you know, if you and do you that, then do you reduce oh, the right. town's tax roll because the town, you know, so the town's right. getting a check for a million dollars. You're not going to get the seventy grand every year because that has to go to the bond payment. Right. So that's that's part. Yeah, that could work that way too. Yeah, but at least our sidewalks would look spiffy. I think we have a lot okay. more work to do. Let's, uh, yeah. I, I, let's I get think some, this is worth tabling. All right, so let's table. And, I really appreciate yeah. all this information. Yeah. No, this though. is huge. Really is Thank you. Okay, and, 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 and I emailed it to all of you guys, so if you just want to look at it or whatever. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Moving along. Any other business? this evening to come before us <laughs> hearing none um, then I'd, I'd uh, <coughs> suggest we have a move on to approval of minutes December 10th Child. Um, 
December 10th. Does anyone have any? Line 61, buses are spelled with two S's, not three. 69. 61. 61. What? What? Yes. That's Shuttle spelled buses. correctly. Buses doesn't have two S's in the middle. It's B-U-S-E-S, -E -S, isn't it? No, when it's, mo when it's, uh, no, when it's, it's uh, two S's. Two S's. Yeah. When it's plural. When it's plural, that's plural. the word I was looking for. Then I apologize. Nice try. It, it was a nice try, but <laughs> the minutes were just too good. I, I found nothing myself. Uh, so, uh, are there any other corrections? Not a to entertain a motion to, uh, the minutes I will point out, though, on line 51, I did ask for an electronic version of all of this, <laughs> and I would like that to happen next time. Um, yeah, we're, we're doing that on Friday. I talked about that. Okay, well, then I do have another one. During coffee with the oh, chief okay, on line you. 63, there should be a comma after chief. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> I want to go home now. All right. All right. Any, uh, so um, all those in favor uh, of approving the minutes on December 10th? All of them, yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. And then the next minutes are for the special joint I wasn't meeting. Here. I'm going uh, to approve. And uh, there's a motion I'll to approve. Second. Second. I found no errors myself. Did anyone else? No. No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, minutes are approved. Uh, so let me just uh, mention before we adjourn um, that we have a meeting tomorrow morning at 8.15, and, and at 8.30, it, it, will, it will also be a joint meeting. But we have, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, adjustments to our budget that should be looked at. They've been given out tonight. So please look at that so that when we gather in the morning, Yes. This right here? Yes. Those are adjustments to the budget that were from the previous discussion. Um, and so we uh, are going to be meeting at 8.30 with the select board, but we sh we're supposed to start at 8.15. I, ju I just got the email today. And uh, the joint meeting has to do with um, uh, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns addressing us. Are going to be there? Yes. Or actually in person? I believe so. Oh, okay. <coughs> that's what I was talking about. Super. Um, all right, so we'll see each other in the, uh, in the morning, and I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion pending, to adjourn. Pending, pending, pending approval of warrants. Yes, we do. We have people.